This is what's become of men. Work hard in your 20s and you'll play in your 30s. The game turns into easy mode. It's like crack. So this one is Jordan, Jordan Peterson lessons. Why Andrew Tate is wrong about women. I haven't seen most of these guys. I just skimmed through them just to make sure they, they don't suck here and there. Uh, but I have not watched most of this. This sounds interesting on the title alone. Let's see. Little hygiene is not such a bad thing. <laughs> As a start, decent haircut, you know, certain amount. I hate that this is what's become of men. You got to tell them to wash their ass and get a haircut. <sighs> the fact that we have to stoop as low as hygiene, wash your ass. That's in the lesson plan today should tell you where the state of men is exactly. That's a perfect barometer for how low expectations of men are in society today. Just wash your ass, bro. Imagine that. On a cleanliness, that's a good thing. What's rule one in the first book? Stand up straight with your shoulders back. What do women look for? Depends on the wisdom of the woman, obviously. Narcissists can fool naive women. That's why narcissists propagate, by the way. And we know this because young women are more likely to fall for narcissistic psychopaths. So he says young women are more likely to fall for narcissistic psychopath, which holds true especially for women raised in fatherless homes where they absolutely need, it's like crack, attention from men to, to feel validated and have a sense of self-worth. And the reason for that is they can't tell them from competent men because narcissistic psychopaths imitate competence and that's their niche. And so they have a confidence that isn't justified by their ability. But the women check out the confidence as a marker of ability and the falsely confident can fool them, especially if they're young and naive. So let's say you're not going to be a narcissistic psychopath, which is often what those manosphere dating sites teach you. It's like, mm. wear an expensive watch and peacock a bit. And to peacock is to wear something, some item of clothing that's, you know, a little bit out of the ordinary, something a little bit more colorful than might be generally the case, so that you look like you're confident enough to pull that off with panache. But mostly it's just, it's just training in a kind of deceptive narcissism. Now, you know, a wallflower guy might benefit from some training in, in narcissistic psychopathy, you know, just to sort of balance them out a bit. So you can make some progress forward. That's why people like Andrew Tate are so popular. And I, I'm not saying that in, in an entirely dismissive manner, but there's a huge danger there. But generally what women want is something like confident, <laughs> productive generosity, fundamentally. Yes, his daughter does have history with Andrew. And so, you know, if that's allied with physical attractiveness and a sense of humor and, you know, the, the sorts of features that a man would also look for in a woman, so much the better. But your basic bet, and I, my suspicions are the guy who answered this question is probably young. First of all, no one likes young men. So if they don't, women don't like you, it's like, well, that's par for the course. Who likes young men? No one. Why? Well, they're basically troublesome and useless. And so that's why. So cross-culturally, women like men who are about four years older than them. And the reason for that is women are more vulnerable on the sexual front, and they have to make themselves even more vulnerable if they have children, especially when the children are infants. And so they're looking for guys who are competent enough to be able to take care of themselves, at least, and then have enough left over for a wife and a dependent child and not because exactly because the wife wants to be taken care of because it isn't exactly like women want to be taken care of it's more reciprocal relationship but if a woman has a dependent child then both of them have to be taken care of especially when the child's an infant and so women tilt the scales toward assessment of men on the grounds of their competent generosity provision the re provision protect and provide that's what it is and, and you know men might be annoyed about that but I would say well if you were a woman you would do the same thing and you know how I know that it's because women are female humans and so if you were a woman you'd be just like a woman so because that's what a, that's what a woman is right so you can't blame women it's like if all women don't like you it's you <laughs> and that's you know that's so annoying it's especially if you're young, because most women aren't going to like you. And so, and it is you. It is true what he's saying. Most women aren't going to like you when you're young. This, again, and I've told you this plenty of times. Work hard in your 20s and you'll play in your 30s. Why would a woman choose to have sex with you and potentially get pregnant or even give you the time of day when older men more established are contacting her at the same time? 
while she's in her 20s also. You can't provide hardly for yourself as a 20-year-old man. What chance do you have for a family? You're going to doom the kid and your own family to a life of poverty, or at least hardcore struggle until you get it all together. The game, you have to understand, guys, you have time. And if you use your time wisely, you come out on top every single time. See, the game is you work hard early. You're not wanted anyways. So you can just at best have fun. That's at best. Or just work hard, build up your empire, your business, your skills. And then once you start getting paid well, once you get a little more maturity, a more mature look to you, that's when they start paying attention because it's even just by age alone. If she sees a 23-year-old guy versus a 30-year-old guy, she'll be more attracted to the 30-year-old guy. He's showing signs of maturity. Even if the even if you have nothing to pre-select from, like a nice watch, nice clothes, which is mostly what happens. 30-year-old men are probably wearing nicer things, nicer shoes, nicer clothes. They have their hair done in a certain way, something like that. That just women pay attention to these little things. Women get their nails done, their hair done. They do makeup all the time. They notice. They notice these little things that men think they don't. They're very, very, very tuned into the minute details. She could look at a 30-year-old man and just off a glance go, yeah, he probably has money. He probably has other women looking at him. He probably has his life together. As opposed to a 23-year-old that's like looking disheveled like a bum, wearing some cheap, you know, non-name brand clothes. Probably he's in a hoodie or he's got some Crocs or some stupid. He's talking loud with his buddies. He just sounds immature. There is a difference, guys. Don't forget to press the like button, gents. Yes. If you just spend a good 10 years building yourself up so that you could be free the rest of your life, the game turns into easy mode after that. You're literally just picking and choosing. You work so much less than what you would have to do, than the amount of pre-selection that you would need as a 23-year-old, than the amount of convincing you got to do, the amount of game you need. You don't need to have much game at 30 compared to 23. Dude, 23, you got to convince a woman why she should sleep with you. So you have to grow up. and But then, you know, you got to understand that if you make yourself competent and productive and generous and a little bit socially skilled and reasonably clean, eventually, you know, you'll fool someone and then... <laughs> and then, you know, might take a few years, but, but generally it happens, so... So that's the thing is don't, you know, don't, don't be a fool. Turn yourself into someone who's worth being around and, and then develop enough social skills so you advertise yourself genuinely. Because, you know, it's not also useful if you're a man to be competent, productive and generous and then so timid and socially unskilled that no one can tell. That's also not helpful. Engineers do that all the time. So <laughs> my friend... Jim, he's my brother-in-law, he's a great engineer. He said, engineers are the only men who never figured out how to turn social status into mating opportunities. <laughs> That's such a funny line. It's also true. That was JPA. Eh?